Hey there. Well, today I'm at work here at the Arlington of Naples, a continuing care retirement community. And in a lot of communities like ours, there are still uh, many unanswered questions related to the coronavirus. And what are we going to do to keep our residents safe, to keep ourselves and our families safe? And uh, there's a lot of anxiety. There's there's uh, not a lot of peace often, and certainly joy can be in short supply. And so you may have heard the saying, the joy of the Lord is your strength, right? You may have even used it to encourage someone or, or been told it by someone else to be encouraged. And, and a lot of songs are written about it. And as true as it is, we often maybe don't even know what that means. What is the joy of the Lord? So today we want to take a brief moment. I want, to, I want to go to the story where the text is originally found. It's in Nehemiah and kind of under, explain what's going on in the context of that particular verse, but also describe for us how it is true that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Not only was it the strength, our strength for them, for, for the children of Israel, or for the nation of Israel in the time of Nehemiah and Ezra, but it's still true of us. Let me read what's going on, okay? I'll give you a, a brief uh, overview quickly though. In Nehemiah, what had happened was Ezra, the priest and scribe, uh, had had the law of God, and it had been read to the people uh, of Israel. As they were hearing these words, they realized, oh, we are not measuring up, and they were repentant. They were, they were sad. They were mourning, in fact, because they realized they hadn't been living in a way that was the way God intended for them to. And then this is what happens when they hear these words. This is that text. Nehemiah, This is chapter 8, verse 9 of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. So the Levites calmed all the people, saying, Be quiet, for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. Now, Marco Church, Marco Presbyterian Church, we have strong biblical teaching, and we have a desire to ensure that you understand the words that are being taught to you. And so I want to help us understand what the joy of the Lord is. Why does the Lord have joy, first of all? Well, you get a glimpse of this in Matthew chapter 15, where we read about the lost uh, the lost coin, uh, the lost sheep, the lost son. After all are found, there is great rejoicing. There is celebration. We're told that there is great rejoicing over a lost sinner who is found. And so in that, in that is the joy of the Lord. The, the, the joy of the Lord, as Nehemiah is speaking of there, is that God is, is incredibly joyful over the fact that Israel is indeed repentant and is hungry for his law, for his word. And We are strengthened by his joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength because of the grace that God extends to us. That grace is given to us in abundant supply and enables us, even in days like this, where it seems chaotic and there are so many unanswered questions and it's hard to to find joy sometimes, that grace that God gives The joy that he has and the grace that he extends to us is our strength. That's how we find that the joy of the Lord is indeed our strength. And so I pray that you are encouraged today to be joyful, but also to take the strength that comes from the joy of the Lord, that grace that he extends to you and I, and to allow that to comfort your hearts today.